Hello everyone and welcome to episode 14 of the Peer Geek podcast and I mean I must say it is always a pleasure to be here and I really do thank and appreciate everyone who does take the time to email me with questions about podcast episodes or leaving reviews on iTunes. I mean I know that takes time and I actually know it takes time to sit here and listen to the episodes and I wouldn't do it if I didn't think people thought it was valuable. So Um, The only way I know that is through people who contact me and let me know that they want a new episode. So here we are with episode 14. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be focusing on a recent unit of work that I did with my year five, six students. And it's actually going to be part of the unit and part of the entire semester with that group of students. It's been so successful. It's actually led to the point um, of them basically running the sessions and um, myself and the teacher that I'm team teaching with pretty much stepping back and just watching as the students take over, take ownership of their learning and use some seriously cool tech to enrich that experience. So I'm going to share with you the entire process about how we made that possible and um, hope that you can do something similar. Now, if you have been following along with the blog in recent months. Um, You will have seen that I have extended my membership offerings on the blog from just offering one membership to now offering three choices. So this basically was from feedback from teachers who wanted more from the membership and I thought, well, let's, let's give them more. And I created a membership option known as Elite Membership. And you can go to thepeergeek.com slash members and see the three membership offerings there and join the Elite program whereby you get access to literally everything I do, including all of my e-courses and lots and lots and lots of things that I um, would normally provide a discount for for other members. Let's say you are already a member and you wanted to upgrade, then you can do that very easily too at that page. You just have simply have to pay the difference between the memberships. And if you've been a member for previous years and you're wondering what member status you are, then you are a pro member. And you get and can stay a pro member as long as you like, keeping access to all the things that you've become used used to. However, as part of the podcast, you'll be you'll probably realize that um, I do give away a coupon code, which you can use to get a discount on any of the membership offerings. And that coupon code is podcast. So on checkout, simply enter that word podcast and you'll get a nice discount off membership. And that's just something I'm doing for those who take the time to listen to this podcast. Uh, I'm going to continue continue to do that and I will mix up the code from time to time with even greater value. So let's dive into today's episode. Now for a little bit of context, the class that I've currently got or one of the classes that I'm currently teaching at the moment is a year five, six class and they are around about the ages of 11 or 12. And all up, we have a class of almost... 50 students. It's a combined class with two teachers and we have that class on a weekly basis um, for a total of 90 minutes, so two 45-minute sessions combined. Now, the the class is actually known as sport and it's um, a little bit different to phys ed in that this is all about physical activity, just getting them active and involved, um, whereas obviously the PE component that they still do, they do both PE and sport. Um, is about the various skills and strategies and um, and digging a little bit deeper. So this sport context is a great opportunity to do a sport education unit with these students. Now, you may be familiar with the whole idea of sport education. Uh, It's not anything new and it's been around for a long time, but the sport education or CPEP model as it's known basically seeks to provide like an authentic means for students to engage um, in sport And it basically reflects the various social competitions outside of a school context. And what it does, it basically works to take you away from the direct teaching approach, putting students in sort of a student-centered learning environment whereby they are tasked with supporting the learning that takes place. And they do this through basically um, being given roles and responsibilities that are really pivotal to the success of that unit. So things such as 
um, being involved as coaches and umpires and captains, statisticians, timekeepers, scorers, trainers, first aid, all those sorts of things that would normally be wrapped around the role of a teacher. So when you basically give those roles over to the students and um, have them and task them with those various opportunities, um, anything's possible. And we start to see all these various learning opportunities arise from um, what was just traditionally the teacher's role. So it's been fantastic to basically give that responsibility to our year five and six students. Now, we started in week one with an introduction to how it was going to work. Um, This was very much through myself and um, the team, t- the teacher that I'm teaching with. We introduced the concept, we broke the students into their teams and they then started to allocate these various roles to themselves. So we had six teams all up and in that there was multiple jobs that the students had to pick from and they picked these roles and wrote them down on the various team sheets that we provided and then we got started with the actual game that um, they were going to be participating in within now because of the world cup ties at that time um, we were doing some indoor soccer and because we only have one court or one indoor court it meant that there would be four teams that were not able to play because of the space that we had access to that would be um, that would be all we had so what it meant was there was two teams playing at any one time two teams also assisting with the play um, on the sidelines Now, the people who were playing in the court couldn't leave the sidelines, but the sideline players could play um, and assist those people from various teams from the sideline. And it meant that really there was four teams sort of playing. Um, The sideline players become really tactical because, you know, you pass to a sideline player and they can't be obstructed with and so on. And um, there was a lot of discussion that could be had about that. And that left two teams who were the duty team and they were sitting off the court um, in these five-minute flash games and they were involved in a whole host of um, duty team roles and these duty teams incorporated both traditional and new roles based and surrounded very heavily around um, technology opportunities. Now for us we had um, students involved in timekeeping and they were just using an iPad and a scoring app to keep track of the score of those teams and they were working with the umpire who was a student, um, highly performing student at the start, um, to basically relay with them when the scores were, when the times were um, up for that game and um, that just happened organically and, and we didn't even need to teach the students how to use the iPad. They basically just grabbed it, started using it, started keeping track of the scores and um, this score was being projected up onto our interactive whiteboard, which meant all the kids that were playing could look up and glance at the score and the remaining time and all those sorts of things. Now, if you're interested in seeing what our scoreboard and projector looks like, um, head to thepgeek.com slash forward slash projector and you'll actually see um, a video outlining what it was that the students were air playing up onto. Now, one of the other roles that we had aside from timekeepers and umpires was a first aid team. Now, the first aid team were responsible for grabbing the first aid kit, wearing the fluoro vest, and they basically had to monitor the situation of play and walk around. And um, they loved it. I mean, they these kids really liked the opportunity to be um, involved in that particular aspect of the game. Fortunately, we didn't need any first aid opportunities, but the, this was one of the hotly contested roles for the duty team um, to wander around as a first aid officer. The next role that we had um, students involved in was statisticians. Now, statisticians were tasked, and there was a couple of them per game um, from the duty team. They were using apps such as EasyTag and Time Motion to track the player time spent in various forms of um you know walk run sprint etc that's with the time motion app and easy tag enabled them to track the um stats such as kicks passes attempts at goal etc for the two teams now um we use those apps and i myself and my colleague we set up two ipads with easy tag and time motion on them and Seriously, it took um, about 30 seconds to show the students how to do that when 
the duty team um, first picked up that task. Now, the way it worked, because we had two teachers, there was one teacher that was involved always in um, the initial play. So, you know, helping with the person who was umpiring, getting set up, etc. But myself, well, I was involved in assisting the duty team. And for the first week only, this is this is all we had to do. I mean, that was the only role that we had. The students were involved in everything else. The second week, we withdrew a little bit more. And I mean, they were involved in teaching each other how to use the various apps when they were the duty team and doing the various roles surrounding the actual gameplay. Now, other than the statisticians, we had some commentators. Now, the commentators were paired up with a media team And the media team were using an iPad and they were basically standing on the side of the play and the commentator would be sitting beside them and the media team would record the game and record the gameplay and meanwhile the commentator would just be narrating over the top. And I mean it was quite funny because these videos were about four minutes in length, five minutes in length, that's how long the games went for. And a lot of the kids chose to use accents and all sorts of things. Um, to sort of make it a little bit more interesting. Those videos we just then shared with the kids later on and they were able to watch their games and hear the commentary over the top and it made as a re- it was a really good way to celebrate what they'd done as a class. Now, after the four minutes, obviously the roles swapped. So the people who were duty team went and actually played and the people who were playing became the sideline players and the sideline players from the previous game became the duty team. So that sort of way of um, switching everyone through was seamless. Now, after our first rotation, um, which was you know assisted with myself and my colleague, um, the kids got it and they knew that depending on where they were in the draw, they would um, process and be doing a various set of roles. Now, other than our commentator, um, we have the opportunity in the second week to um, extend the media team role with an app such as Calabracam. Now, Calabracam is amazing. Basically, you get multiple iPads and they get all paired together. And basically, you have a a director who gets to choose which camera they want to record the feed from. So if you can imagine four students standing at four corners of a basketball court, pointing their iPad and following play and having a director who is the fifth iPad sitting on the side watching the feed from four iPads and quite literally when they when the ball is close to the top right corner and it's being filmed really well by the person who's really close by the director would choose that feed to record and then when the ball went down the other end well rather than having um a video which was being taken from the other side they would just switch feeds to Um, the person who was nearest by. And what it resulted in is this incredible footage um, of the game that looks like a professional professional level um, attempt. And the students love this role. So the media team was really hotly contested um, after that. So aside from those um, opportunities there, obviously you've got um, statisticians and timekeepers and umpires and um, scorers and so on. I mean, there is potential scope to have a social media team. I mean, while the game is playing, you could have a class Twitter or Edmodo account that basically they push out notifications on. Um, This would be really interesting and definitely mimics the the whole idea of elite sport. Um, Other than that, I mean, obviously they're duty team roles, but there are the playing team roles as well. And I mean, these could have tech involved in them as well. Um, However, I mean, I think it's fine to keep these without any sort of use of tech the idea of every team having a captain who is responsible for the coin toss and for sort of leadership. I mean, they maybe are a highly um, motivated and highly skilled student in that particular sport that you're doing. Um, Every team has a coach, again, who, you know, works with that group. And then finally, I mean, every single person has a player responsibility as they actually play in the games when they're not the duty team. So that's the basic idea of how our CPEP program worked. And Over time, I mean, points were awarded for wins and points were awarded for draws and so on, but the greatest share of points were awarded to um, students for the roles that they actually did. So, for example, I mean, if the student turned up and participated in um, a warm-up, then they would receive 25 points. Now, full change of gear was worth 50 points. 
game results, while a win was worth 20 points and a a loss was worth 10. So the actual gameplay and the result wasn't worth as much as the various interpersonal skills that they needed to do. I mean, if we thought that people were cooperating, then they would get 20 points awarded to their name. And quite simply, at the end of every session, the last 10 minutes were spent allocating these points to each of the people in the teams. So the team sheets that um, we had set up would have every kid's name, they'd have the week, they would have the points they received from all of the various categories. You know, did they bring their PA gear? Did they participate in the warm-up? Did they um, work well, etc.? At the same time, we did have deduction points. So, I mean, we haven't had to apply any deductions, but um, the team sheet would take away points um, if needed. And at the end, we ended up with a cumulative point for the team based on all of those elements that I've just spoken about. And as a result, we had a ladder situation which had all the teams seeded, but, I mean, we didn't necessarily have the teams that were winning at the top because all these other things um, made sense. So that's the basic idea behind our CPEP role and the way in which we integrated the technology into it to sort of enhance it and enrich it. And if you're really interested in looking at how you can do a CPEP unit in your school, then head along to thepeergeek.com forward slash CPEP, which is S-E-P-E-P. And you can see a full e-course that I've built um, that has over 15 HD video tutorials in it. It's got all of the team sheets, all of the role outlines, all of the scoreboards, the spreadsheets, the various tools that we used, and the apps, etc., um, within our CPEP program. So the idea being that if you take that e-course, um, you can basically turn the key on everything you need to use the apps confidently, and have all the resources you need to do this um, in your school. Now, I've even in, um, had some videos made that are student videos that show the students what the CPEP program is about. Um, quite simply, I mean, they are a explainer video about how the CPEP program differs from a traditional PE class. And you can use that to basically get the concept across to them. Um, From that, I mean, it's over to the students and and they basically take on the roles and responsibilities that we would usually have. And I mean, this is so powerful and so engaging. I mean, I had students in the class that are often, I wouldn't say disengaged, but harder to engage, really strive forward with this role because not only was, um, you know, the gameplay important, but the various things that they are talented in were were really respected and really appreciated and you know I had students who have a a real affinity with with video and they became the media team and their role was as valued as everything else in the class and it created a incredible team dynamic an incredible experience where everyone was involved and I mean we're going to be using the CPEP model across all of the various sports that we um, that we utilize so I look forward to seeing and hearing how you've used sport education Um, if you've used it before then have a look at the e-course and see well what apps and and technology could I fit into this e-course to take it to the next level it's really worth exploring and all the schools that I know have employed CPEP units and this whole different um, idea of CPEP pedagogy um, have really propelled forward so yell out um, if you've got some good examples of that (laughs) 